Hi everyone, I'm Vic, and I'm here to talk to you about three different ideas that you could use for your machine learning project in this course. And Pascal is really excited about all three of these directions, so he would be really happy if you know three different groups took these on. The first one that I'm going to talk to you about is fact checking. And the idea is that when you go online, there's this huge spread of misinformation. And really, uh, it's going to get very hard in the future to distinguish between what's a real news article and what's something that is fake and is trying to mislead you. And so what Google has done is they've gone and curated a bunch of fact-checking websites. And so they will give you, here is the claim being made. Here is some supporting evidence in favor or against that claim. And now we need to decide whether that claim is true or false or, you know, it might be partly true as well because some of this has a gray area. And this is a really interesting opportunity to apply, you know, a lot of the classification techniques which you'll learn in this course. I think probably by this point you've already covered a couple and certainly from here you're going to learn many, many more techniques which you can try using on this fact checking problem. So concretely, if you wanted to do this as your project, what you would do is step one, download this Google fact checking data set and you'll probably have to spend you know, an hour or two really reading through it, understanding what are the kinds of claims being made and the kinds of evidence used to back them up. And then once you understand that, you'll be able to design some good features which you can use for your machine learning techniques. Then the next step would be you just take some of those approaches which you've learned in this course and you try training some classification models to determine whether or not the news is true or false. And if you really want to push this to the next level and do a really excellent project, then you can go online, you can see what are some other really state-of-the-art techniques for classification. You can you know, decide what you think a good approach would be and try using one of those also on this model. Does that make sense to everyone of how they could do you know, some kind of AI fact-checking technique? Yeah? Cool. All right, so this is what I think the most straightforward uh, project idea is. And then the next two are going to require a little bit more information that you might not have covered in this course, but I think would be really, really relevant. And so they could make for an excellent project if you want to go to another level. So one of the big requirements for doing that fact-checking approach, which I talked to you before, is you need supporting evidence. Right, on its own, a classifier, just given a claim, cannot determine whether that claim is true or false because you know, it can't know every possible fact. Right? It needs some other information that it can trust to tell it you know, uh, some context about the situation. But if you look at most news articles today, they actually don't come with in-text citations. And so you couldn't just run some AI fact-checking approach directly on them. And so inserting these in-text citations for supporting evidence is going to be a really important step in stopping the spread of misinformation online. And it turns out that there's some really, really good data sources out there to help train models to do this. Because if you look at academic papers, they all have really, really good in-text citations in there already, which you can use as ground truth. Or there are some news websites, such as theconversation.com is one that we identified, which has academic quality citations, but for news articles. So what you would do concretely is you would download this large corpus of maybe a million academic papers or whatever you know, your computer can handle. Maybe that would be a bit ambitious. And you'll look at kind of the graph of which articles are citing which other articles. And you might have to remove some of the citations if uh, you know, they're not inside of your corpus. Then the next step would be to try to train a classifier to predict where in each article there should be citations. So maybe at each word you would be predicting you know, true or false for whether or not a citation is needed at that point. So for example, if you saw a sentence like, Canada has 10 provinces and three territories, that might be a good point where a citation is needed to back up that fact. So your classifier would predict true right there. And then after that step of classification, you would need to apply another technique, which I don't think has been covered yet in this course, but is super important to learn, called recommendation systems. And this would recommend what citation you should be linking to. So some concrete examples of recommendation systems, which you guys have probably run into before, are like Netflix recommending you movies, or you know, YouTube will recommend videos, shopping websites will recommend products. And in a very similar vein, you can recommend what sources should be cited. And there are many, many great libraries and tools which have already implemented the core algorithms for recommendation systems. And this would be an excellent opportunity for you to apply this to help stop the spread of misinformation online. Uh, a second, you know, I guess the cool side effect of this approach is you could make what's almost the next generation of like easybib.com where there's a lot of these citation websites. 
you know, a student, they upload their paper, this thing fills in all the different citations and it will generate you a full bibliography so that way, you know, it really automates the process of adding all that supporting evidence to different papers. But I think the main application really will be in, you know, helping verify that claims are true. Does this approach make sense to everyone and how you would approach it? Yeah? Great. I'll move on to the third project idea. So this is based on an area of research called reinforcement learning, where you have an agent in an environment, in this case playing a video game, and it's just trying to maximize its reward. So in a video game, you want to you know, get the highest score, you want to win the game. And right now, whenever you have an RL algorithm trying to learn to play a game, it just takes forever, right? It takes millions and millions of interactions with the environment, way more than a human would ever need. And there was a great paper that investigated why this happened, and it's really because these models have no priors for how to play the game. So, for example, when they want to look at a game like Sequest up at the top, um, they're just looking at it like a raw array of pixels. They don't know any structure on the input, and then they're just trying to predict what actions should be taken. And sure, this will work, but it's very, very slow. When a person normally looks at a game like Sequest, they can very I know it's hard to kind of pick it out on these slides, but if you were looking at the game, you would see a health bar or an oxygen bar right there. You would see your score, the number of lives, all the different ships and obstacles around, and you would understand what those different things mean, so that way you could learn to predict what's gonna happen in the game very, very quickly. And so some work that me and another student here, uh, Jameson Wang, did with Pascal last year was just the first step in uh, encoding human priors into the models. And so it was, can we pick out what the different objects are and then just have the agent at least know where the objects are in the game before it's going to start trying to learn how to play the game. And so you can see kind of in these two columns, highlighted in green, this is where in an unsupervised way the model has learned which objects are in the game. And then only after it can actually find objects do we tell it to try playing the game. And just this, this one intermediate step, very, very straightforward, was able to speed it up dramatically. Right? So some future research ideas would just be to add more and more priors which people already have when they're playing the game and try to get the AI to have the same priors. Some examples would be physics-based dynamics. So you know, if a ball hits a paddle, we know it's going to bounce. If the ball is moving straight, we know it's going to keep moving straight. These kinds of things, we shouldn't be spending you know, millions of frames to have the AI learn it from scratch when we can just encode that into the model. Other things such as uh, handling 3D environments, I think is already being tackled by one of the students in this class. And then there's this idea of object-oriented RL, where you really just try to explicitly reason about different objects in the game and you know, what they could mean for predicting the future. So I think this is like a really wide open research area where there's you know, a lot of different priors that you can try and putting into the model, and it would be a really cool technique to, to see. With any of these three uh, techniques, feel free to reach out to either me or Pascal. I'm sure would be very happy to help you with them or any of the TAs because uh, he would like to see this happen.